Thank you. Exactly what Craig just said. I'm going to ask for your help today in making a shift, okay? Because when most people think about sustainability, they think about the green technologies and conservation efforts. Um, but I'm going to ask you to shift that now from thinking about things like wind farms and light bulbs to the inner life, okay? And this is my symbol for the inner life today. Call this whatever you will. If you call this soul, if you call this self, integrity, Buddha nature, Christ consciousness, whatever you call that place inside you, it kind of comes from the heart, okay? So we're shifting from wind farms and light bulbs to the inner life. Okay? Here are my core questions. Since we're in academia, I want to know, how are we doing? How are we doing helping students understand their inner life? And how are we doing helping students understand how what goes on in their inner life impacts the outer world and vice versa? Okay. Here's where I think we're at. Paulo Freire, we read an excerpt from his book, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, in our Lib 100 classes. And this is what he says about some forms of education. Some forms of education, the teacher is the sage on the stage and is cramming as much information into the heads of students as possible, right? The role of the student is to accept this information as much as you can. If some drops on the floor, you're supposed to pick it up and shove it in, right? Okay. Um, and the problem with this that Paula Ferri says is that it does a few things. First of all, it disconnects the knower from what is known Secondly, students are separate from the teacher. You know, students are separate from each other. Okay. Perhaps more problematically, the idea of knowledge is that it's separated from the world. Okay. It's like a thing to be deposited. Okay. Um, the thing that concerns me about this idea of behind education is that what happens when you're a student in this kind of class? What does it feel like when who you are your humanity is not welcome in the class, or is not necessary. Okay. So I want you to hold the image of the banking concept student in your mind right now, head crammed full of information, right? I like the way that Sir Ken Robinson talks about this as well. How many folks have seen this TED talk? How school, yeah, you've all seen it. It's a great talk, right? He talks about how as students move in through their education, they're progressively educated from the waist up, and then we focus on their head and slightly to one side, right? Then he talks about if you were to send aliens down to see, you know, what is the purpose of education anyways? You know, if you just looked at who wins, who gets all the brownie points in this system, it's university professors, okay? Um, but there's something funny about university professors, he says. We kind of live in our heads in our minds. Right? We're disembodied creatures. Okay? <laughs> All right, so I want you to hold these images in your mind. You've got the banking concept student with their head crammed full of information. You've got the disembodied faculty member wandering around campus. All right? And if you don't have your Halloween costume set, this might be, you know, a way to go. But there's a different way. How many people know Parker Palmer? I love this example for education and for living our lives more generally. Um, he talks about the, living the undivided life. And this is a way of living so that our heart is working together with our mind and our inner life is honored as well as the outer world. Okay? His metaphor for this is called the Mobius strip. And what happens if you put your finger on the Mobius strip and you start to run your finger along this, you find that suddenly and seamlessly you go from the inner side of the strip to the outer. And if you continue, along the outer edge of the Mobius strip, you find that suddenly and seamlessly you're back inside. Okay? And the message behind this is, in order to live the undivided life, we have to pay a lot of attention to what's going on in our inner life and how that inner life is impacting the outer world. And then, how the outer world in turn is impacting our inner life. Okay? So the goal of the undivided life is to walk this walk, do this dance with a very high level of awareness of that exchange between the inner and the outer. Okay. Laura Rendon, in her work, Santi Pensante Pedagogy, takes this idea and turns it into a teaching method, a pedagogy. Right? 
And she talks, you know, senti is sentir, and that's this heart stuff. It's the place of feeling, emotion, insight, intuition. And she puts that together with the pensante, the brain work, the rational analysis, the part of ourselves that wants to render things in a chart, as Daniel Pink would say. Okay? She has this teaching and learning dream. But what happens is when she looks at faculty who are doing this in the world, they're all flying under the radar. Okay? And this is because she identifies there are entrenched agreements at the university that are actually working against teaching students in this holistic way. She identifies seven. I only have time to talk about one today. Okay? And it's the agreement the university makes to privilege outer knowing at the expense of inner knowing. Okay? This is easy to see. Ask the question, who wins? Who gets all the brownie points at the university? When you answer that question, you find it's all about the outer stuff, nothing about the inner. Okay? Now, this idea of the agreements is a Toltec idea. It comes from Don Miguel Ruiz. And if we could just see that it's the agreements that rule our life, and if we don't like the consequences, the results of that, what we need to do is change the agreements. Okay? So if we don't like the idea of the disembodied faculty member in the banking concept student running around campus, we need to change the agreement that creates that in the first place. Right? So this is what that looks like. Laura and Don says, why don't we recast the agreement to say, yes, we value the outer knowing. That stuff is important. And we value the inner life as well. Okay? It's a yes and. Okay. So look at the world. If we don't like the way the world is right now, we need to examine the agreements that created that in the first place. What's the current agreement with regard to sustainability that we're living? Well, I think it's one of living in a very disconnected way with the Earth and living in a way that's very disrespectful of the Earth. So if we want to change those agreements, we need to find ways to live that are Earth-honoring, that are connected. The good news is here, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are lots of people that know how to do this. Last week on campus, my teacher, C. Michael Smith, gave a talk on why shamanism now. And in this talk, he completely outlines what it's like to live in a connected way with the earth, what it means to live in an earth-honoring way. And from what I've learned, what I hope I'm starting to understand, the crux of this is to live from an open place of the heart. You've got to learn how to open your heart. And that's hard for all of us that have been stuck in our heads. Okay? We have to learn to open the heart, then you've got to clear the mind and use the mind as a servant of the heart. Okay. And what happens when you open your heart and you go out into nature, your heart is naturally attuned to the earth. Okay. So you naturally connect with the earth. Okay. And then a funny thing happens. You start to see that, hmm, this idea of sustainability and soul sustainability, these things are indistinguishable. You know, if you want to have earth sustainability, you have to have soul sustainability because these things exist completely together. Think about back to the Mobius strip, when you're running your finger along the inner and it becomes outer, and then you're running your finger along the outer and it becomes inner. Parker Palmer says, there ain't no inner and outer, okay? There ain't no inner and outer. So it's a yes and, yes. We need wind farms, and we need soil sustainability. Okay. I want to leave with a quote coming out of Parker Palmer's new book, The Global Issues Facing the Next Generations Globally Demand That We Educate Our Students Worldwide to Use All of Their Resources, Not Just Their Mind or Their Heart. The hour is late, the stakes are high, but few institutions are better positioned to take up this work than our nation's colleges and universities. And that's an idea I think is worth spreading. Thank you.